Welcome back to Piney Grove, folks. Brad here. Deb is at home because uh, she's taking care of uh, the newest addition to the family. As you've noticed on this channel, her neighbors uh, out here in the country have a pit bull. Real nice, friendly female pit bull, and her name is Bella. Well, we've got our own Bella now. And if you watch the tribute to Gunner video where we recently lost our 11-year-old um, Brittany Spaniel, uh, at the end there, there was a little surprise, and the surprise was uh, my wife rescued a um, an owner surrender, Brittany Spaniel, a little female Brittany Spaniel, 14 months old, and uh, she's a handful. She is a great dog. Um, she's been kind of kenneled up her whole life, so she's really it's, um, really excited about her new freedom and uh, her new backyard and all that stuff, so, so we're just trying to get her calmed down. She's just not ready to be left alone all day. So see behind me, the slab, they've come out here. This is the pole barn slab. So the video should be out on that. You can see they've cleaned up all of the form boards and all the other things around here and hauled all that off. So this slab is complete and so is the pump house slab. Today, what I wanna do is I wanna grab my tiller and take it to the welder. So I'm gonna try and get some footage of that. But I wanna get some footage of him welding a hitch on the back of my rototiller because we're gonna tow a colder packer behind the rototiller when we do our food plots out on my hunting lease. So uh, that's my task today or this weekend is to get that hitch done because it's November next week and it's time to get plotting. Okay, change of plans. I'm actually gonna go put the box blade on the tractor and work this dirt here around this uh, slab of the shed or the pole barn. This dirt is dry enough. I'm actually gonna be able to work it, I think a little bit around this pole barn concrete. So let me go put that box plate on and get to work here. All right, folks, my camera battery went dead, so it's been charging for a couple hours, but I've been working steady on the tractor. So let me show you what I got done here. So I was working on that slope there when the tractor died, right there. I got that pretty much worked in. It needs a little bit more field dirt, but we'll keep walking. Along that concrete edge there, I filled that in. Well, first I went around and picked up all the nails and the concrete pieces, but all that I got filled in. And then inside the actual pole barn where Bella's walking now, there was just big old mounds of dirt from where they dug these footings and they dug the pad. So I knocked that down and then I had to take the tractor bucket and chew up the big old clods of clay from the pond and get it where that was spreadable. So I'll turn this camera around and we'll get a closer look. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit more box plating. It's 3 o'clock. I need to get on the road. But I got this side filled in real good. And this side, like I said, was all mounded up. And I got all that knocked down. And it was just full of these big boulder size chunks of clay. So I had to take, take the tractor front end loader. You can see where I chopped it there. And I just chopped, chopped, chopped all these big pieces up so I could move them. But I'll move the dirt that I have in here around. I got a little bit of pile there and there. And in that corner, a little hump right there. And then right here, there's a dip right here I gotta fill in. 
but I'll move around what I can probably work about 30 more minutes. I'm not going to get to this outside edge. Not going to get to that. I need to push that dirt up against that edge and I'm going to either have to buy some more dirt or get some dirt from the pond. And then I want to sweep this off, but I'll step back and let the sun shine in here and uh, it's shaping up real good. This will be the side. This will get sheet metal on this side. This will probably be open bay in the vehicles. Probably the excavator will, will live in there. And this concrete end will be my dad's workshop. And that 12 by 12 room will be the feed house. And all this will be stalls. And this will probably be a hip wall, four to eight foot, I'm not sure. And then the rest will be wired to the top. Completely close off that end, a 10 foot door. And then of course, the end of the shop will be all the way up to the eave. The end of the 12 by 12 feed house will be up to the eave. But the rest of the bays will either be half bays or three quarter bays. There'll be wire mesh across the top and then sheet metal um, up for, well, probably eight feet there. And again, that's to protect Deb's critters. We don't want bobcats or anything getting in there and, and messing with the goats and the, and the llamas and the cows and the, you know, whatever Noah's Ark stuff she's gonna have in here. But also I did a little work around my parents' house. There was a, a pile of dirt here, so I smoothed that out. Did a little bit of box blading. It, it was a little wet, so it didn't want to feather the way I wanted it to. It did a decent job, it's just not perfect. But I ran it out here, it's a little bumpy. But like I said, it's wet and it didn't really crumble and spread the way I wanted it to. But from this angle, it looks pretty decent. That was a big old pile there. There's a bunch of chunks of concrete in it. I pulled all those pieces of concrete out, threw them in the dumpster and then spread that out. Cleared this out a little bit, picked up, I don't know, probably four five gallon buckets full of trash and nails and stuff. I tried to box blade this, this was very wavy, but it was big old humps of clay through here where they had dug out the footings. And I knocked it down the best I could, but the angle of the box blade was actually digging into this topsoil here. And with that lumber in the way, I just couldn't get it the way I wanted. And it needs some more dirt here. It needs some fill dirt, not some clay, but some actual topsoil. And um, try and encourage my dad to sod it. Oh no, a good day. I never know what I'm gonna get into when I'm out here. And uh, I thought that dirt when I first got here was gonna be too wet to work with, but it wasn't. It, uh, it worked in pretty good. And, and as I was exposing it to the sun and the air and the wind, it, uh, it got easier to spread and was crumbling better. I'm talking about the dirt around the pole barn. And so that worked out pretty good. So I'm gonna do a few more, a few more passes with the box blade while I'm out here. And then I need to get on the road and get home. folks like I said when I opened this video I never know what I'm gonna get into and there's always so much to do out here 
But uh, I got on that Kubota and I got all this smoothed out in here. And I, and I just finished sweeping it off. I didn't record that because who wants to watch somebody sweep? But I got it all clean. All the footers are cleaned off. And I did a decent job. I'm no professional grader. I, I really don't even like to use a box blade. It's just, I don't know, I'm just not good at it. So there's a little bit of hump there in the center and uh, I could push a little bit more dirt to the edges, but I think for, you know, an animal pen, it'll be fine. Maybe we'll put some, uh, some light dirt in here, maybe not some sand, but definitely not clay, but something that we can shovel with the straw and the wood shavings or whatever we're going to have in here in the stalls for bedding. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, I'm going to walk down this slope here that, that I worked on and you saw me do it with the tractor kind of sideways is, you see a lot of pole barns built out there and they're just kind of placed on the property, right? There's a house and there's a pole barn behind it. And you can just tell that uh, it gets wet under that pole barn. So elevation is king and this pole barn will never flood. Uh, these animals that'll be in this barn, any equipment, the it, water just doesn't run uphill. So um, we took a, a lot of time and uh, money to make this pad on the side of this slope here and water is always going to drain around or off the side of this pole barn. And in addition, it's guttered, so that'll keep it from being wet around the sides. But that's very important. Uh, site selection is very important for anything when you're building, whether it's a house, pole barn, shed, whatever. But uh, water drainage, you can just see, you know, that thing is, um, the concrete itself is 16 inches above the, um, the slope here, and that slopes down like three feet. So. This thing, water doesn't roll, it doesn't flow uphill, so this thing will never get wet. But I'm gonna turn this camera around and show you what we got here as far as uh, the concrete, the footers, and the pad. Okay, if you remember from the beginning of this video, there was piles of dirt everywhere, there was trash everywhere, pieces of concrete, nails, um, and it's all cleaned up. I got it all cleaned up. I got all of it back filled against the footer with clay where I had clay, and um, swept it all off so the footers are nice and clean. Now I did some work here on the north end of the building which is how you'll enter the pole barn and there's a little hump there in the center and you can see by the footer right where Bella's standing there you can see by the footer that there's some dirt that's needed here and that's kind of steep going up there and the animals are going to go in and out of that. There's a need for a lot more dirt here on the north end of the pole barn but we've got three years to figure figure that out. So it looks pretty good. It's hard to work that L-series tractor inside of this without going up and over the footings. And I was trying to avoid that until all the dirt got packed. But uh, I'll put the camera down low. You can see there's a hump right there directly in front of the camera. And um, there's a little bit of dirt needed. But you can see when you see the concrete on the inside here, you can see some right there. Um, there's just places where it needs dirt, but it's come a long way from where the way it looked this morning. I'll put the camera down low and you can see, you know, there's a couple inches of dirt needed in here. But again, all this dirt, everything from that 12 by 12 jut out right there, all the way to me and Bella's tail, that's all going to be animal stalls. And then this open center section, it's going to be for the tractor to get in and out so we can pitch manure or whatever a tractor needs to do in here. Tractor may even stay in here, not sure on that yet. And then this side will be stalls as well. So we didn't want a concrete underneath the feet of the animals. I know you can do that, but we didn't want the smell of urine and, and all that. We wanted to be able to pitch the stalls. So we can take that straw and those wood chippings and that animal matter, and we can spread it on our pasture to build the organic matter and build the soil around our farm. So. That's why we did it that way. And again, this is the feed room here, 12 by 12, and the end will be a workshop. And then up there, uh, the workshop will be lofted. So there'll be a big loft above the workshop. And I don't know if we're gonna loft the stalls or not. We might loft the stalls, maybe not on this side, but over on this side, on the stalls, we might put a ceiling on them and put a loft above them. Got a lot of height here, so. One thing I wanted to make sure I mentioned in this video before I close it out is that none of the work I'm doing here with the tractor, about four hours today, is going to be included in a concrete pad. Um, so don't expect that your concrete uh, installer is going to do that tractor work. Um, they're going to put in a level pad or level footers, but they're not going to backfill it. Not unless you pay them, and that's countrywide. That's not just here in Florida. That's just the way they do it. They knock the boards off the forms and they leave the concrete mess or whatever. They take their boards, they do a little bit of light cleanup, 
but they do not backfill. Do they, they do not level the dirt inside of the shed, um, inside the pole barn there. Now you could certainly put that in a contract and pay them extra and pay for the extra dirt in their tractor time, but tractor time's $100 an hour. And, um, you know, four hours today, I got $400, $400 invested in that if I were to pay someone. So just keep that in mind that when you see these perfect pole barns with the perfect slabs, that uh, it's not just five, six, seven dollars a square foot for the concrete. There's a lot of other work um, that goes in to get them to their, their finished state. So, okay, that's a wrap on the uh, pole barn. Uh, concrete uh, backfill that I did today. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed this type of content. This pole barn is going to get built out and I'll document that along the way. We'll, but if you like this video, please help our channel out and click like, uh, subscribe if you would, and share with your friends. All that stuff helps us uh, build, build our channel, build our subscriber base. It also helps the YouTube algorithm to suggest it to people. So any, any little thing you could do like that to help us out would be appreciated. It motivate us to take more videos, motivate Deb for all the editing that she does on these videos. So uh, we'd appreciate it if you'd help it out. But otherwise, that's all I've got today. Um, Y'all take care and we'll catch you on the next one. Whenever I leave, Bella likes to race me. And there she goes. She's already to the corner. I don't know if you can see her. She's already at the corner waiting for me. That's, her home's on the other side of the fence. Bye, Bella.